Hello everyone, this is The Astro Geek Comics where I talk about astronomy and space science through my fondness for art. If you would enjoy SciArt Comics based on astronomy and space sciences, you can follow me on Instagram. My handle is at the rate The Astro Geek Comics. This is the fifth and the last video in my series where we talk about astronomical spectroscopy and learn how light acts as the messenger of the universe. Till now, through the previous videos, I have explained the wave nature of light, the spectrum, and their use to calculate distances, motion, and chemical composition of celestial bodies. The study of spectrum is called spectroscopy. In this video, I will talk about the use of spectrum in estimating the temperature, the size, and the age of a star. In the process, we shall also come across a very helpful way of classifying stars using the hertzsprung russell diagram or the HR diagram. While studying black hole radiations, Vien found out a relation between the wavelength at which maximum energy is being released by the source and the temperature of the source. This relation is called Vien's law and it states that the product of wavelength of the maximum energy radiation and the temperature of the radiating source is equal to a constant equal to 0.0029 meter Kelvin. So in order to keep the product at this constant, if the source radiates more in the longer wavelength, that is red, then it is at a lower temperature compared to its temperature when it would radiate more in the shorter wavelength, that is near the blue. This makes sense because energy relates directly to frequency which in turn decreases with increasing wavelength. Black bodies are idealistic bodies that absorb all energies in all the wavelengths falling on them and based on Kirchhoff's law, they are also the best emitters of energy. A star in space can be approximated to be a black body. This simplifies the task of calculating the temperature of a star. As previous videos discuss, the star emits energies in all radiations but the intensity or amount peaking in one particular region of wavelength and the spectrum represents a bell curve with superimposed absorption line dips. If looking at the spectrum, we are able to detect at what wavelength is the star peaking its emitted radi energy, we can calculate the temperature using Vien's law. As discussed earlier, longer wavelength stars are colder than shorter wavelength stars. And so, colder stars appear red, while hotter stars appear white hot and even blue. We do not see violet stars a lot because we do not have many receptors for that wavelength of color in our eyes. But then why do we not see the green stars, which lie between the blue and the red end? This happens because a green star will emit some light in red and blue too, all of which mix together to appear white. Interestingly, our star, the Sun, is in fact a green star. And that explains why all plants are mostly green in color. Red and blue colors are on the limits of the visible spectrum. So only one end, hence one color, is seen instead of the whole white color. This temperature which we are measuring is actually the surface temperature of the star. I have made a sci-art comic on which we discuss why we do not see any green stars on my Instagram and my website. Coming back to the topic, stars are classified on the basis of the surface temperatures in a scale with seemingly random letters in the order O, B, A, F, G, K, M, where O type stars are the ones with the hottest surfaces and M types are the coldest stars. Our sun is a G type star. O-type stars like Zeta Orionis have surface temperatures of more than 50,000 kelvins. B-type stars like Regulus have surface temperatures higher than 20,000 kelvins, while A-type stars like Sirius and Vega have surface temperatures of more than 10,000 kelvins. F-type stars will have temperature around 8,000 kelvins, while Sun-like stars in the G-type category have temperatures around 6,000 kelvins. The stars in K-type category will have a little bit more than temperatures of 3500 kelvins. One of the biggest star, V. Y. Canis Majoris, belongs to the M-type category. An easy way to remember this mnemonic is to remember the first letter of every word of the sentence 
only bad astronomers forget generally known mnemonics. At first thought, the temperature of a star might force you to believe that a hotter star would be bigger than a colder star. But reality is stranger. Stars like Betelgeuse, which is almost half the temperature of the sun, is a red supergiant which measures more than 700 times the sun in size and would cross the orbit of Jupiter if it were to replace the sun. The M-type star Vy Canis Majoris is one of the biggest stars in the known universe. But then are colder stars always bigger? Well, no. There exist stars called red dwarfs which are much smaller than the sun and belong to the M and K type. But why is there such a confusion? Well, stars like red dwarfs are too small to fuse hydrogen in their cores, slowly releasing less energy and hence less temperatures. Also stars, after they cross the main sequence stage of their lives, where their cores have used up all the hydrogen, moved on to fusing helium. And in doing so, they enter the red giant or the red supergiant stages. The size of stars increased remarkably in this stage and now the energy has to spread in a bigger volume and hence the average temperature falls down. In this lifetime, a star goes through various stages and various temperature and size changes among others. Our sun will become a red giant in 5 billion years. So how do we calculate the size of stars? Well, as the star gets bigger, the surface is farther from the center and the pull of gravity on it is lesser. Now in stars that are smaller, the surface will be acted upon by more gravity so things will be dense, leading to more collisions than if the star were bigger. Increased collision of ionized atoms with photons of energy and other atoms lead to broadening of spectral absorption lines. Hence, a smaller star will have more broad lines of absorption while giant stars will have sharper lines due to a dilute surface which means less collisions. The another way of using spectra to estimate sizes is to detect highly ionized states of metals in the star. In a small star where collisions are more frequent, it would be rare for atoms to stay ionized for long. And higher the ionization, rarer would that be. But in giant stars with less atom-photon collisions, exchange of energy will not take place, which means that atoms shall stay ionized for longer. And absorption lines of these higher ionization states of the atoms shall be visible in the giant star's spectrum. A giant star will shine brighter than a smaller star at almost the same distance from us because luminosity is directly proportional to the surface area. Now, once we know the surface temperature and size of the star, we can guess what stage in its life cycle it is in. A star with higher surface temperature but smaller size will be a white dwarf. If it has a high amount of splitting of lines, it might be due to magnetic field, which would mean it's a neutron star. A small star with less surface temperature is a red dwarf. Sun is a star with average size and average temperature. Stars with very hot surfaces and giant sizes are blue giants and blue supergiants. Looking at the chemical composition can also guide an astronomer in guessing the stage as an older star will have higher concentration of metals and less hydrogen and helium in it. Based on stars in the same cluster and different stars that we have studied in each of the different stages and lastly with the knowledge of nuclear reactions scientists are able to estimate the age of stars. It should be pointed out here that these are very wild estimates and not at all to be taken with certainty. Though they are based on reasonable arguments, they are probabilistic in nature. The sun's estimated age is 4.9 billion years and it shall remain in the main sequence stage of its life for another 5 billion years. As a rule, a bigger star will proceed faster in its life cycle because it would use the fuel faster to release energy through nuclear fusion reactions at the core and support itself. On the other hand, red dwarfs use fuel so slowly, we have never observed a red dwarf die. And their estimated age is longer than the known age of the universe, that is 13.8 billion years. 
astronomers have a very interesting way and creative way of representing the stars which is called Hertzsprung-Russell diagram or the HR diagram after its inventors who found out that the stars of every class have a special relation between their absolute luminosities or brightness and the surface temperatures. If we represent the y-axis with increasing luminosities and the x-axis with decreasing temperatures, so the origin of the x-axis will have the highest surface temperature of O class and slowly extend right towards lower temperatures. In this chart, stars in the main sequence of the lives almost have a linear relationship between size and temperature and occupy a diagonal region from left to bottom right. Red giants and supergiants with high brightness, bigger size and low temperatures occupy the top right corners. Bottom right corner below the main sequence region is booked by red dwarfs which have low brightness and low surface temperatures. Stars like white dwarfs and neutron stars which are very dim due to their compact size but have surface temperatures very high occupy the bottom left corner of the HR diagram. So with this, I've played my part on talking about how light and its study can help us unravel the secrets of the universe. This was the last video of the series on astronomical spectroscopy. I hope you enjoyed the series and it was helpful for you or at the least satisfied your curiosity a bit. I would love to read your suggestions and feedback on the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching this video and please do not forget to like the video and follow the Astro Geek Comics by clicking on the subscribe button below. If you want to be notified when I release the next video, you may also click on the bell icon. In case of suggestions for future series and videos or your thoughts on this one, you can comment below. I would love to read them. Remember, you are the real MVPs whose support keeps me motivated to make more educational videos on astronomy and space science. The comic numbers of my Instagram comics mentioned by me in this video are mentioned in the description of the video. Until next time, stay curious and keep looking up.